Hey guys, today we're going to unbox, assemble, and demonstrate the TE5240 electric pressure washer. I know, electric pressure washer. Hey, don't go anywhere. You guys are gonna be really impressed. Let's get to it. All right, good morning everybody. And so today I bring you yet again, another unbox, demonstration, assembly type uh, video. And this is going to be supposedly a very powerful uh, like 1800 watt electric pressure washer. Um, the difference between this pressure washer and the previous electric pressure washer that I did, this pressure washer actually has the individual tips that we're all familiar with, your different colored tips to put at the end of the wand. Whereas the other one had that turn dial and, and you know, to make it go from a fan to, you know. Uh, so this one's slightly different. So let's go ahead and crack into this and see what we got. And I'm gonna give you the exact model number and everything right off of the paperwork that's inside the box. So let me go ahead and get this going here. This was shipped to me about three or four days ago. And uh, it's Saturday now, so this is my first opportunity. Uh, so here you go, little parts of uh, bolts, screws, looks like wood screws actually. Um, and a little tool, styrofoam, there's the wand, and we'll get into all this in just a little bit, but we're going to unpack it so you see what we got, a little holder of sorts, and I'm really excited about this because it's always nice to have something quick and convenient that you can just quickly plug in if you need to do a quick wash and that's that's the good part about electric pressure washers so there's a handle there's your hose looks like it's a plastic hose here's the unit that I'm holding with one arm and a bad shoulder that's the actual unit itself and here's another little bag of something and then here's all your tips that I told you about. And it looks like it comes on a nice little holder that's gonna get mounted somewhere. So we'll go ahead and open all this up. So there's all the tips I told you about. So there's your soap tip, your 40 degree, your something degree. See, they actually say it on there. White's your 40, green's your 25. There's your 15 and red's your zero. So red is like pinpoint freaking put a hole in anything you hit and yellow is a little dangerous that's why it's yellow green you're pretty much good to go white easy peasy lemon squeezy and then black is your soap tip uh, so in this order is your order of danger so I usually use the black tip and the white tip whenever I'm pressure washing and I actually need pressure I usually get away with the white tip so I was excited that it came like that uh, so here's two holes right here obviously some of these screws that are in this bag uh, are gonna go into this. So we'll set this aside and we'll open this up. Of course, I'm gonna link to this unit in my video description and in the comment section uh, so you can check it out for yourself. I honestly have zero idea what it cost. Uh, they just said, hey, do you want to? And I said, yeah, let's do it. So there's the little, shows you a picture where the soap holder is gonna go uh, and that fell on the ground um, where the wand goes the hose, so that's pretty cool. Here is the little handle. Oh, look at that. Oh, no, it don't. I thought you pushed these buttons and it extended. I was gonna say, well, that's kind of nice, isn't it? All right, we don't have to worry about that. So here's some more bolt holes right here. Obviously, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there's four more places that we need uh, for the bolts. Pretty easy, huh? Doesn't seem like it's something very difficult to do here. All right, they even give you a screwdriver for the bolts. Pretty cool. All right, not sure what that is or this. This is a hose connector coupler for your garden hose to the unit, obviously. Here's a little tool they give you. We'll figure that out. And of course, like I said, here's all the hardware. We'll figure that out. Um, 
this is probably one, two, three, four. So now we just found a spot for all 12 of those bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and there's 12. Can't be that hard to figure out, right guys? Here's the tip, and it looks like it's gonna have a quick disconnect on the end, of course, or the wand, I should say, for all your tips. So that's pretty easy. And here's the wand, and guys, I did this in real time with you, so as I got it and I'm opening it, you'll get it and you'll open it. So here's the little wand, and obviously, obviously right here is where the hose end is going to go. There's a little cap on there, we can chuck that. Here's this, and you got this little end right here. Looks like you're just going to do that. Yeah, okay. So if you want to take it apart, you got it like this, push it together, squeeze it together, twist, and you can take it apart for easier storage. Um, and then to put it back together, there you go. And then that's where the uh, hose is going to connect and that's where your tips are going to connect. Small little O-ring in here. So note to self, guys. Whenever you're using a pressure washer, whether it's an electric pressure washer or a gas powered pressure washer, if you take the tip out and you're under a pressure, even if you turn the machine off and there's pressure backed up in your wand and in your hose and you squeeze the handle, you're going to blast the O-ring out. And when you put the tip in and you get ready to pressure wash again, you're going to get sprayed in the face because there's going to be no O-ring in there. So always be in the habit of turning off your machine, cracking the pressure out of the line, and then removing your tip. Same with any quick connect on any pressure washer, whether you're doing hose to hose, or if you're doing uh, you know, a tip, or if you, you take the wand off, let's say you got a ball valve, and you turn a ball valve off in the middle of your line, or right here, and you don't let the pressure out, and you pop the coupler, you're gonna blow the O-ring out as soon as you pop the coupler, and that's irritating as hell. Uh, so just quick little pro tip there to help you guys out. Uh, so here's the hose. Looks like it's about a 35 foot hose, I think. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not overly concerned because it's electric, so it's very portable, so you can easily move this thing with you. The, um, you know, the issue with this is where you run out of hose, you just make it up an extension cord. So instead of going out and buying expensive hose, you can just buy a longer extension cord. And of course, you're gonna want your extension cord to be a nice heavy duty extension cord because the thinner the, the electrical wire, the hotter it gets and the more chance that you're gonna have of blowing an internal fuse if it has one, popping your circuit breaker at your house or catching your hose on fire. <laughs> that would suck. So, yep, here's this. This is probably gonna go to the machine and I'm 90% sure this is gonna go right here. And that is gonna be what that little tool right there is for. So we have this and this. And so that's what that little tool is for that they give you. Uh, but there are two sizes, uh, so we might need this again. I don't really know. And then the end here is just going to be a screw on um, right onto the machine here. So let's set this aside. If I can assemble this whole machine without spilling my coffee, it gets five stars. If I spill my coffee, we're going to play rugby with it. All right, uh, let's see what we got in this. Now, when I do a review, and this is not a review video, this is an unboxing, assembly, and a demonstration. When I do a review, I like to use a machine for a little while. I like to find all the good things about it. I like to find all the bad things about it. And I like to defeat the bad things about it because everybody has different applications. So where you might say, oh, that thing's a piece of crap. I can't pressure wash houses with it and make money. Yeah, maybe you can't. But this might be perfect for somebody with a boat or a car or like my Jeep or like my motorcycle or like my motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, this might be perfect for somebody with a condo. You know, somebody that has a, lives in a townhouse, like in Florida, they're called townhouses where you have like a whole, you have one floor, maybe two floor homes that are all connected, small little, little doohickeys. 
They might share a common ground. They all have like parking lot out front. They're called townhouses. Um, I don't know if they call them that other places. They might have different names for them. Um, barrio, ghetto, stuff like that. I don't know. Um, but no, the townhouses are actually kind of cool. You know, you might have a back porch that you just want to work on. Gosh, this thing comes with an extension cord longer than an elephant's trunk. And it has a inline circuit breaker, which most of the electric ones do, so that's good. But this looks like it's about a 50 foot extension cord for crying out loud. Um, there goes my neighbor. He's got a WRX that's all souped up, fixed up. God, it's so nice. Every time my son sees it, he's like, oh, I want one. Uh, so it looks like this is gonna go right here. Like so, yep. So this is gonna go right here, I believe. And then we got some bolts that we need to assemble. And, those, and the things that we are assembling are going to be what holds your hose and all that sort of stuff. Okay, this is your on-off right here. That's pretty cool. Um, look at that, huh? Too easy. Let's make sure that we have everything in place in a place. This is probably gonna hold the wand. This is probably gonna hold the hose. This, I don't even know what that goes to. This is obviously going to go here, like this somewhere. But you know what? We're going to break out the book at this point and see where things are supposed to go now. Because we don't want to start assembling improperly. Yes, as suspected. All right, so this and this. This and this are going to go here and here, and that's gonna hold the hose. Boom, boom. This and this is gonna go here and here, and that's your handle, okay? Um, this and this is gonna go right here, and that holds your tips, okay? And power cord. I think that's a holder for the power cord. Hold on, almost done. Hose holder, got to see where a hose holder goes. Oh, hose holder goes right here, like this. Maybe, nope, sorry, my bad, like this. Okay, and I think that just pops in with no hardware, perhaps. Oh no, it does have hardware. And then you got this, which goes, not sure where this is on the whole gun holder. Okay, the gun holder goes right here, like this, okay. And then you got the soap. And the soap holder right here, where's the lid? Where's the lid? Uh-oh. So this is your only black nozzle is for low pressure and for using detergent. So there's one of these on this side. So this will go on this side and the hose holder goes on the other side. Okay, like that, boom. Um, but I don't see the lid. Where's the lid for this? The lid, the lid, the lid. Water inlet connector. Hey guys, you didn't send me the lid. How am I missing the lid, guys? Looks like we got ourselves a problem. Yeah, it's not in here. Not in any of this. Uh-oh. Spaghetti-o. They didn't send me the lid on this. That's a bad deal, guys. Crap. So what we're gonna have to do is uh, maybe put like a sandwich bag with a rubber band with like a rubber band over it or something until I figure out what happened where it is I'm sure it's here somewhere we'll see if we can find it if not 
Doo-doo happens. The question is, how do you clean up the doo-doo? So they made a little boo-boo. If they did, let's see how they fix it. I'll contact the company and say, hey, yo, yo, hey, I got no lid. How am I going to pressure wash with no lid? Huh? My solution going to go everywhere, huh? And that's not good. So I promise, though, I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use that um, accent. That'd be a fail. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put those pieces together. You don't need to see me screwing. That would be on my OnlyFans page. You don't need to see me screwing uh, all this stuff together because uh, it's pretty much common sense. But I, one more time real quick. This is going to pop on like this. This one pops on the other side. I guess it's up to me to decide which side I want it on. This is for the garden hose inlet and that goes right down here. So this goes on here and then right there. Oh, look, here it is. Found it. Found it. Look it. Look it. Look it. Look it. Look it. <laughs> huh? Huh? I guess that makes up my mind that it goes there. Pretty bad, but huh? I knew when it comes to rubber, <laughs> I'll find it. Wait. So, and then this goes on this side right here. And just kind of slide it on with a, a sense of purpose. You know what I mean? Jelly bean, a sense of purpose right there. So you got the wand and the hose is going to go in the front here. Oh, <laughs> I didn't screw it in. <laughs> All right. So this is going to real time guys, real time with Dan's vlog. So this goes here like that, and then you, and then, then you go, honey, can you hold the hose for me? And then she's like, no, I'm cooking dinner. And you're like, oh crap, all right, my bad. And then you go, hey baby, hey, the wife's inside cooking dinner. Can you hold the hose for me? And she's like, I'll be right there, sweetheart. And you're like, all right, cool. Um, so let me go ahead and finish assembling this, and then I'll be right back, and uh, we'll see how it works out. Okay, so I do have it all together and it was just exactly like I showed you. Everything just popped in and the screws just went very self-explanatory. It, it does a really good job. Their, their manual actually, for something that's coming over from overseas, does a really good job of demonstrating exactly where to put everything. Uh, and then it comes with the little Phillips head screwdriver like we, we suggested and it worked perfect. I used it to assemble it. I did not use my power drill. So super simple. Uh, also came with the little tool that you use to put the hose uh, on the actual wand. Um, and then you got down here, you got the hose inlet that you tighten on really tight. And then you have this is loose. So you take your garden hose and you line it up, take the male end of your garden hose, you line it up right here to the female end and make babies. Too easy. Uh, this is your soap dispenser. Very common question you guys are going to have about this unit is can you put bleach in this soap um no do not you have to use pressure wash uh pressure washer safe detergents so this is not going to be something for bleach so if you want to use bleach to clean like your vinyl homes or something like that you're going to have to find a different way of doing it um one thing that you might be able to do is pick yourself up one of those foam Canon little uh, adapters that you plug into the bottom of your, your gun there. You can buy them at any hardware store. Uh, I used to have one. I'll be right back. Okay, I don't have one. Um, I threw it away. I had one, but I threw it away because I just, I don't really like to use it that much. But it's actually a bottle that you can buy. It, they call them like little foam, mini foam cannons, stuff like that. They're like 60 bucks. And they come with the end to go into the end of your, your wand, your tip. So you take off your black tip. And you put that little bottle on and it has a sprayer on it and you can use that at the end of this and you won't be siphoning bleach through your pump now what you can use with this simple green you can put some dawn you can put some car wash in there you can put anything that's going to be a mild detergent that's not going to hurt the seals of the pump bleach or acid or anything like that is going to hurt the seals of these pumps so you don't want to do that this is not a downstream chemical injector unit this is upstream which means which means if you pee upstream your pee is going to come down your leg so this is upstream so if it siphons it in it's going to come down the um, pump downstream means if you pee downstream it's going and it's going away from you 
So a downstream chemical injector would be after the pump. All right. Um, I know it's kind of a weird analogy, but that's the best way to explain it. All right. So don't pee on yourself. This is locked in, ready to go. So what we're going to end up doing is we're just going to give this thing a little test. I'm going to check out the, the tips. Uh, I got a nasty Jeep behind me that needs to get rinsed off, cleaned off. So we'll throw some car wash in here. We'll use the black tip. We'll soap up the Jeep and then uh, we'll go ahead and pressure it off with the white tip and just see how it, how it works. All right. Um, the hose fits right up here. I did put a, a twisty on it because this is a brand new hose. It needs to sit out in the sun and soften up a little bit and then you can roll it up. If I undo this twisty, it wants to spaghetti off of here. Um, all your tips are right here, just like we discussed. Two bolts, too easy, maybe four. Yep, two bolts right there, too easy. And then the power cords right here. Up to you if you wanna wrap it up like that. Um, if you're using the machine a lot, you might wanna just throw it around the handle or not even wrap it up at all and just throw it on the ground in a circle, whatever. Um, and then, like I said, the hose in here and then the tip. So too easy, let me go ahead and get this thing hooked up to the garden hose and we'll do a quick little demonstration. It's not gonna be a review video, just a little demonstration, see if this thing works, put out some power, see how it feels. Okay, so the way it works with the soap bottle is uh, you just go ahead and throw some detergent. This is just some blue coral wash and wax concentrate. Um, concentrate means it's not thinned out, means it needs to be thinned out. So we'll throw a little bit of soap in here. I don't know, a third of the bottle. And uh, you just drop the little siphon tube and the rubber cap on top and get to work. So like I said, the hose is uh, hard because it, it is a cold day. It's in the 30s right now. So it needs some sun <laughs> to go ahead and, what's the word I'm looking for? Soften, you know, get a little bit more pliable. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and push you guys back a little bit. Okay, so that'll probably work. And then you just drop the soap bottle down right in here, put the little rubber cap on and you're done. Grab your black tip out of the back here. Grab your little handle and then you guys know, you just line it up. Now I did turn on the hose and I think I got the power on. I'm not sure if I have to hit the little breaker on the power cord. I might have to. Hang on. I think so. Hold on one second. Let me turn the little breaker on. Now it does have auto stop like you just heard. So once the pressure builds up, when you let off the handle, it stops, uh, you know, pumping. So there you hear it. Now let's see if this thing's going to siphon that thick soap. Oh yeah, it sure is. Look at the suds. Seems like it's uh, almost kind of cavitating. Like it's still trying to build some pressure. Here we go. Hold on. See, it's, it seems like it's still trying to build up pressure. Like it's so new, it's, it's got to work through or something. Take the black tip off. Store it. Put the white tip on. Let's see what happens with a little bit of back pressure. Whenever you put on a pressurized tip, you remove the siphoning option. So the soap that you see right now is actually just a soap, the residual soap in the line.
It's a hell of a lot more pressure than a garden hose, of course. Not quite as, as much pressure as my four gallon, 4,000 PSI pump, but it's also not a $2,000 machine. And I'm also not putting fuel and oil in it. Not a bad little machine. It's got some pretty good pressure. It says it's an 1800 watt electric pump in there, which is uh, pretty powerful. Now, are you gonna sit here and pressure wash concrete with this and try to make a big difference? No. This is not for pressure washing concrete. This is not for a business. This is not for vinyl homes. This is not for two or three story homes. This is for doing the type of work that you see me doing right now. Maybe pressure washing off your dump truck. That's what I'm gonna use it for later on today. I'm gonna bring my dump truck home and I'm gonna wash it. Um, Pressure wash your car, your boat, your motorcycle, your patio furniture. Maybe do your backyard or your side house or something like that that has mold and mildew growing on it. You can do it on your own, but this is not for a business, so don't judge it as such. But, I mean... I just got all that concrete dirt off right here from driving through my parking lot at work and uh, I mean that looks pretty darn good you know so I mean that's the uh that's the I'm not sure how to pronounce it the t t e a n d e I'm not sure how to pronounce it teen teendy tandy teened I'm not sure uh it's the te5240 electric pressure washer easy to assemble light even with the hose and everything connected, really good for people a little bit later in their years and stuff like that. And like I said, condos, townhouses, boats, little work like that. Check it out. Links to it are in the description. Uh, hope I help you guys out. And I, I like it in the sense of it did exactly what I expected it to do. Um, so if you're in the market for a nice little convenient pressure washer, give the Teen de, tn day, ten day. Give the uh, give this unit a, a shot. All right, video uh, links in the video description.